Hi everybody. What we're going to do today is just look at light design from very much from a, a creative angle to start off with. Um, light design often looks like uh, the lighting looks like a very very sort of difficult, technologically complex um, uh, product. Uh, but actually, you, know, you can break it down quite easily into some of the more interesting, more aesthetic, more creative elements, which drive the original design from which then you can start looking at the technology to help produce that. Just in terms of people's background, who's from a sort of creative background here? Okay, and in terms of uh, more of a sort of technological event production, stroke producing background, so the, the remainder of... Fine, okay. This, this is very much gonna be driven from the creative background. We're going to really get involved with looking at what light is and what light design is. And it, it's a twofold thing, but what I'm trying to do is get us to be a little bit more visually aware. Because if we can become a little bit more visually aware when we first walk into an event space, when we first get a brief, um, there are many things then that will assist the whole production process. And it sort of comes from all sorts of different levels. We're all a, collab a, a part of a collaborative team. And we're all working towards the same uh, final end, end product, which is the event, well, product launch trade show, whatever it ends up being. Um, but we're all coming from one singular point as well. And I think as part of the collaborative team working together, we can use light as a very, very strong and powerful tool to assist you in delivering your message and delivering the communication of the event. So, first of all, we're looking at what is light and design. Because, actually, we're all lighting designers. One of the things that's happened recently, uh, the, the introduction of a large number of design programs on television, for example, is we've all suddenly realised we've got control over our own spaces, especially as at home. You might not think you're doing it, but you make a decision either to switch a light on and off, or move your standard lamp from one position in a room to another position in a room, or change the lampshade, and suddenly you've become creative about lighting design, and you've made that decision. So, light and design comes from there, but also light and design can be something like this. Light and design is completely, throughout the world, a wide variety of different disciplines and different things. So, in terms of what we've got to look at, we need to consider where light and design initially starts. Many people say light and design should start from here. The actual source, the styles of equipment, etc., etc. Many, many different things that we've got to play around in and work with and our talking. But I believe light and design starts here. And I believe it starts with the world around us, what we see, what we observe, and we then take that with us into our project that we're working on. In the end, we're basically, we're inspiring our imagination and the imagination of the people that we're working with. We are basically trying to create or define a new environment or modify or work on an existing environment. And often what happens when, when you walk into a space is you, you know, you're immediately uh, given a number of challenges looking around you here, this is a particularly modern environment, a modern space, often you're, you're walking into classical buildings or buildings which have their own particular character. Um, and you're trying to, first of all, decide what that character is, what that space is saying, what it's communicating. And then from there on, you can start defining what the final message is going to be that you're going to give out to anybody else through light. So, Thinking about something like this, thinking about images of this nature, what we have to do as lighting designers is very carefully break it down into what the message is saying. I come from a very theatrical background. That's, that's my uh, initial interest, that's what I came into doing within the industry. And I like to think that pulling from theatrical disciplines, pulling from those ideas, and most importantly, in telling a story, is, is essential to every part of life and design, whether it's architectural, theatre, 
or event and, and product related. Because in the end, we're delivering a particular message and we're an assistant in, in the, the process in delivering that message. And there are many, many ways we can do that. Take a, a, a classic example, for example, of a, of a brief where we're given a, a, the brief says, light a plinth in the middle of the room. Unless we have th little bits of information about what's on that plinth, or whether we're lighting that plinth for illumination, or whether we're lighting that plinth to be uh, a creative element, or whether that one plinth is one of a number of series of other plinths, each one of those different questions redefines the way we might come at the light and design, the way we might actually arrange the equipment or arrange or style the system to achieve to achieve an end result. So it's all these sorts of questions that we're looking at. And what we need to do is take one step back and think, what is the message? What are we communicating? What is the story? And more importantly, what do you want your guests, what do you want your uh, clients to believe in and feel at that particular moment? So taking an example of something like this, what are we looking at in terms of the lighting design, the lighting style, and why is this image so interesting? You know, I opened up to yourselves. What what is the principal light source here? Sunshine. Sunshine. And why do you think the image looks so interesting? Yeah. Um, for me, it's the fact that her body is blocking it and throwing it onto her leg. Yes. It's the contrast between dark and light. Exactly, it's yeah. the contrast. It's the, the strong motivation, the fact that you can't see part of the body, which makes it appear, appear a little bit mysterious. The large and strong shadows. In this particular instance, the fact it's black and white. And all these elements are communicating in some way uh, about the actual scheme. Looking at this, again, as an example, it's very much about contrast. It's about white against black. You can't see any detail, but actually you've already got in your mind an idea about what's going on in that particular scenario. <coughs> it may be an establishing shot. It may be something that you see at the beginning before you move into revealing more information. But the important thing about this is it's giving us a good starting point. What about this? What sort of story does this tell us? What sort of atmosphere do we think this has? Sorry? Dawn. Fresh. Fresh, yeah. Calm. Pure. Pure. Why do you think it looks, why do you think it's such an interesting image? It's got texture. Mm-hmm. Because of the reflection. Reflection. It, you know, and the fact that the water's written, you, know, you can see a, almost a mirror image of what's going on at high level versus uh, what's going on in the pool of water in front. The colour range isn't that diverse. We're dealing with ambers, blues, yellows. We're not dealing with a, a, a large number of different discrete colours. It seems to be very calming. It seems to be quite a reflective picture. Something like this, as a visual reference, gives the lighting designer a starting point for moving forward into a scheme. Something like this, or this, as an example. What's your thoughts on this one? Sunset. Fire, turbulent, sinister. If you almost cut off that bottom bit, it's actually difficult to tell whether that's the clouds. Or that could be molten lava, rock, etc. But it's more threatening, far more threatening than the previous picture. The colour scheme isn't that different. It's still red, it's still amber, minus some of the blue that we had in the previous one. But the format, makes you feel, makes you engage in the picture in a different way. Whereas something like this, what do you think about that? It gives you geographical Yes. In terms of atmosphere, what do we think? What, what we, how would we define this? Yes. 
Yeah. Well, why do you think it's mysterious? It's a colour range that we're not actually relating to day to day. Yeah, it's a bit weird. It's unfamiliar. It is, isn't it? And we have to think about that, you know, we are so conditioned to certain colours. And that's one, one other thing that's really interesting about light design, really interesting from a cultural point of view, is we are, um, we are all conditioned from birth to understand certain things and certain colours and certain responses to those colours. And not just colour, but style of lighting as well. And something like this just adds an edge to it, because it's not quite what we expect. And that's often useful, but in some respects also can go completely against the grain. But actually, all the pictures that we've looked at so far have come from one particular starting point, which is a sky scene. So what I'm trying to look at here is not just about how we might set these scenes up and the atmospheres and so on, but also in terms of communicating briefs forward in saying we need to be quite specific, because if we don't have the right information, We've got three potential options that we've just gone down there, of which are three of a, of a multitude, which get very, very different answers. Just looking at other pictures going forward, things like this, it's really interesting, it's really evocative, it's in the natural world. But actually, something like this is, start, is coming closer to some of the scenarios that you start getting in an event um, uh, or, or a, uh, a walkthrough of some description where you're, you've got flats and so, on, and so on and so on. You might want to light them in an interesting and evocative way. Whereas something like that, again, it's a really, really interesting image, but it's using the natural world. And there are many, many ways with lighting technology to achieve something very similar to that. And one of the other things I do a lot is, is I don't just take inspiration from the natural world around. I, I spend a lot of time looking at art because art often is contrived in that the artist has already tried to get you to see things in a particular way. Um, but pictures and paintings are formatted in a particular way to direct your attention to light. What's wrong with this picture? Yeah. What's, if you were going to uh, apply a style of lighting to this, what do you think it would be? Sorry? What sort of like an atmosphere, a style? What, what, what do you think that would be? It's just natural daylight. It is, but it's, it's natural daylight that's been contrived in a particular way. It's not, if you think about sunlight coming through a window, one thing we're missing to start off with is no detail of the window bars on the window. So it feels really soft. And that's what we're looking at. It's an extremely soft environment. There are many ways that the painter could have seen this or, or de depicted this and, and given you a slightly different result. like this is very inspirational because it, whilst it's an impressionist painting it gives you lots of bits of information in terms of colour, <coughs> texture etc but it has an overriding feel and overriding emotion. It's actually a picture that feels like it's moving. Where do you initially look on this picture? The light. Sorry? The light. The light. And what does that lead you to? The dark. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> the, figure. Yeah. the figure, yeah. So that's what, you, that's what it's leading to. That's what I meant. So, but you don't automatically see the figure. 
So one of the useful things here with Light and what we're doing is we're trying to direct people's attention. We're trying to, in this particular case, we're not showing you know, the, the actual subject uh, in, in, in its all its glory and full light. But what we're doing is revealing a little bit of information which makes your mind think, what's going on? Why is there somebody there? But also, this particular style of writing as it is, sets a really, really strong emotive viewpoint for the picture. A very, really strong atmosphere, a style. So, what this could be in a theatrical terms, and in, in an event terms, is it could be a beginning of something, the establishing shot that gets revealed, and the next layer might be that you reveal the person, but then the next layer might be that as you reveal the person, there's a door that also gets revealed on the right, and that next person walks through that door. So what we're doing is we're moving forward in steps to ensure that we're communicating very, very efficiently and effectively what's going on. A picture like this, a painting like this, it's a very, very interesting painting. There's only one light source, and the light source is the candle. But what it's doing is it's showing that you can light, a, light a, uh, an environment in a very different way, in a very moody, mysterious way. And I say mysterious because you can just make out the faces of the people that are beyond. And it's very important to us to know that there is people there. Because the, the message of the picture would be very, very different if it was just the two figures in the foreground. So we're not just thinking about the subject and what we're lighting, we're thinking about everything that's going on around it as well. Anybody know this, this picture of this painting? It's one of, sorry, it's a turn, that's right, yeah. It's one of my, my favourite um, paintings. And the reason being because it's got a really, really strong metaphor behind it. What do you think that, that metaphor is? What do you think that message is? <laughs> no? Is it the sun going down on the age of sailorships? Exactly. That's what it is. It's, it's the fact that we've got sunset. The sunset is naturally the end of something. On this side, we've got the brand new uh, steam driven tugboat pulling. The old majestic sailing boat, or, or um, putting that one to its death, basically. And the colour scheme that's being used in this particular scenario, the fact that the, the tugboat's been shown as this black, rigid, strong thing against what is quite a majestic um, uh, sailing boat with the, the moon behind it, just helps to reinforce that story. And I, I, yeah, and I find this interesting from an other side of the country because if you think about it, it's very easy to put these metaphors, these suggestions into absolutely everything. So we come back to our event scenario on a brief where you say, let's like this clip. And the next bit of information is you tell me, okay, we're lighting this clip, but on this clip there's going to be a statue. The minute you say it, that there's going to be a statue, I know that I've got to reveal that statue in a particular way, which is going to make the three-dimensionality of the statue spring out. Which means I've got to use more than one light that I might have used previously to just like print and provide, provide illumination. So little bits of information like that help then feed back into communicating the entire design. So what we've been talking about, very, very simply, is directing attention, setting moods and atmospheres, setting time of day, setting locations, revealing form, transforming, suspending belief, and telling the story. And every single one of those points is as relevant to a piece of architectural life and design, as a piece of theatrical lighting design, as a piece of event lighting design. Because purely by the choice of equipment and the choice of st the style of placement, where you, where you decide to place that equipment, what colour you choose, and um, then what effect you want to create with that, 
you tick all those boxes in a, in a particular way. So coming full circle, when I walk into a room and start thinking about what I'm looking for from a lighting point of view, and I've, I've got a brief in front of me of what we're perhaps trying to achieve, these are the type of things I'm thinking about. I'm also thinking about practical elements, such as, in, in, a, in a st aesthetic point of view, what the room is telling me, if it's a, a fantastic classical room with 10 columns aside, I know that the columns and the architecture are going to be a very leading part in lighting the room sympathetically. But I'm also thinking about how I can use all these points to reveal your brief. So, what I thought we'd do as we're, as we're moving through um, is have a little look at some of the technology that's available. Have a look at some of the, the things we've got here that help us to deliver our lighting designs. And as we go along, we're going to pick up on a few things. And I'll, 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 I'll just briefly talk about one particular thing now, which is technology is changing an awful lot in that what was traditionally lighting design, which is generally putting a spotlight up there and focusing it on some, something or someone, now lighting design is becoming part and parcel of, part of the visual element and the, 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 the boundary between what might have been historically audio-visual and what, is, what might have been light design is blurring to the point where both now are, are part and parcel of the same phase. So some of the equipment that we're looking at here is not just an illuminator, but it's part of a visual tool as well. It can be used to create backdrop screens, etc. So what's quite useful from a light design's, light design's point of view is having feedback and knowing about what the full visual element of the, of the uh, interior the room concept is going to be. Also, we have to understand, I'm sure you've, you've, you've all heard the term LED, and I'm sure you're all quite familiar with that in terms of how it's affecting our day-to-day -day lives. You know, in, in, a, in a responsible environment, uh, in our homes, in offices, etc., we're being asked to change our light sources across to LED, across to sources which are environmentally responsible, that are going to reduce the amount of uh, <coughs> electricity consumed but there are drawbacks to that because qualities of lights are different. When the LED was first introduced, you used to go into B and Q and be able to buy, uh, you know, a, a retrofit light. You put that in your in your in your light fitting to make yourself a uh, make your standard lamp more responsible in your house, and um, it would look horrible. It, the quality of light would actually not be sympathetic, not be something that you would actually really want in your home. But things have moved on, and now LED is very much a prevalent. Um, and it is possible to light productions entirely with LED, and everything that previously has been done in terms of the projectors, the, the, uh, the, the what large washes of light, etc., etc., you can now do with far more responsible sources. So that's quite a useful thing in the light and design is talking about. And you know, I've previously been out and, and lit quite a few productions recently where every single thing on, on a large scale has been an LED source. And what I've been able to do is reduce my power distribution demand because I don't know, I no longer need the 300 amp three phase supply in the corner of the room. I can actually now do everything off of a 32 amp single phase supply. That's reduced the electrical costs for the entire project. That's reduced a lot of the logistical costs of delivering. Cable, uh, the amount of cabling you need and the installation times of that, etc., etc. But also, it's ticked many environmental, responsible, and sustainable boxes as well. So, from the client's point of view, from, you know, from your point of view, and from your client's point of view, you're also dealing with their mandates. So, in terms of looking at bits of technology and so on, um, I'm sure you know, some of you have, have come up against technology of this, this, this nature. I'll introduce one little toy to start off with, which is the, the, the GDS um, battery unit. Because, and, and the actual satellite as well, please. Because something of this nature is quite an interesting little tool. Because it doesn't run off of uh, a, a wired electric, uh, electrical supply. You can place it absolutely anywhere. 
and remotely you can change its color. Remotely you can change its color, its direction, its position, and so on and so on. And so as, an, as a light source, it becomes an extremely flexible tool within the light and designer's toolkit. And it's become quite a, a unique product in that respect. Because it's, it's made, it means we can go into a, a venue, uh, quite often uh, with the venues around London, as you're aware, there are restrictions on time and, and access and so on, and very, very quickly deliver a lighting scheme using equipment that is of a level that it, it, it achieves things that perhaps were previously un, 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 unaccessible to us because it would have been too uh, time consuming to have installed. And just so running through, this can actually change to any colour that we want it to be. And also comes in a variety of different formats in that respect, from something of this nature, which is a spotlight, to something which Mitch Stewart's got on, on the floor there, which is a more an upright or something that reveals form, something that in architecturally embellishes an environment. So they are really, really useful to us. We use these quite a lot recently in the Natural History Museum for right. lighting. We've done a lot of gallery openings and they have poster tables where they have exhibits they might exhibit them. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. One of these could be positioned next to the poster table. There's no wires, no risk of any tripping. You can change the colour immediately as quickly as to install them. We found them using our great Yeah, time. and they're just really, really flexible and simple. And you can, um, you don't always have to have the text. No, they can be standalone, you can walk around. There's 50 colours on board to yeah. choose if you want, or, or you need a page and a desk to, uh, to pick a specific colour better. A lot of our day to day clients <coughs> are usually quite satisfied with one of the 50 or more colours, there's generally something there that suits them. One of the, um, moving on to other types of technology, one of the things that often we have to do, um, let's go in a, in a conference scenario for example, is like the backdrop, the cyclorama of the, uh, of the stage. And uh, previously, up until recent technologies, it's been large, large, large amounts of floodlights to be able to achieve that and consuming a lot of energy. But now, there are two scenarios, little options that I'm like showing you here. One is something like this. Which is a panel that sits behind uh, a cyclorama cloth, for example, uh, lights through the cloth. It basically is the same size as your background. And this is a, an LED source. So you just connect them all together and you can colour change, etc. etc. So this is one solution. We didn't, we didn't bring um, any amounts of cable to make all this work because if we Okay, some days. Um, but we've got, I think we've got a, we just used it recently at the um, River Island, Rihanna, Rihanna's fashion show launch. Which um, these were, you'll see on one of Richard's pictures, these were behind the set. Do you tile them up? Yeah, you tile them up, bit frame them. screen or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but the, the nice thing about them is you don't need to bring in the depth. No. So you're, you're going to sort of that sort of depth yeah. and then you print completely even covers yeah. across your background. And you've got no ground there. Nothing at all. You can go 10 high, I think. Oh, it's just from a structural point of view. You can go 10, 10 of these high before it needs another supporting frame of some sort. So and how close to the site? 300 mil, normally. So you can hang the site of one corner of the truck. Yeah, that's yeah. the that's that's design, yeah. I believe that's the way they did it with Mary Poppins, the theatre production, did exactly yeah, that. One of the first, one of the first shows we supplied these to, and, and the light design used it to great effect. I'm sorry it's not on, but you can imagine you can, you can have sunrises slowly coming up and down, colours changing the school. And then, uh, going back to what I was saying about being more looking at this from an AV point of view, every single one of these can be individually addressed. So if you imagine this on a really, really large scale, it's an absolute gigantic video. Wall. <laughs> Low res gigantic. It's worse than the resolution. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've got to get the star about three miles away to see it. Which leads us nicely onto that. Yes, it does. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Which is a slightly. This is a, a, a video panel, basically, and you just form, you just tile them again uh, to create a video wall.
whatever dimension you actually want to, but not just video or you can sort of do whatever matters and so on and so on. There was a photograph of your presentation. Yes, there was. But again, it's a, it's a very simple, straightforward plug and play option. It doesn't require a lot of video technology, but you can very, very simply achieve a sort of full, full, full scale professional video result. We're finding more and more, particularly with the video cost purposes sometimes we've got one high res LED board which is for the content and then it's surrounded by a lot more low no, res yes, right, yeah. and then that's there's always that question of whose tool is that there? Is yes. that videos or is that lighting? Because when it's low res you obviously preferences to run colour and texture through it uh, and not video content. So yes. I don't know, it's just a comment really. No but, it's, but it's, you know, it defines that point that from a lighting design perspective the, the band boundaries have merged. Products now overlap so much. Um, Somewhere we we quite long to see this being used in my head is on the rise of trends. Yeah. Um, you also got the yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. 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 You could see you, know, you could have you could have your company brand, your brand logo down on the stairs, or change the colour in front of the trends. We've got that. So it could be a challenge. We've got that feeling. Of, mm -hmm. One of the benefits to things like a simple system like this is it is plug and play. It is absolutely just data chain on to do it. So we have been in at the Natural History Museum and done a large scale installation within 45 minutes. Very popular for TV stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah, they use it on the X Factor and it was very well used. Richard Sturbeck used it for a Mercedes last year. They had really content running down. The car's driving through it and the, the two patterns of next to it very effective. So, but it's emerged, it, it's how the industry is emerged. It's a hybrid of technology. Theatre now will control it all through one lighting desks at the end of the day, so you can keep your running costs down. They will have two creative teams, but ultimately this is on one lighting desk and one operation. Well, I'm showing how I enjoy it a bit of this, but ghosts, the music. <laughs> 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 things like colour and things like basic texture are very, very simple things that we can use to do it because we all relate. We all understand that particular colours mean something or particular texture or particular environments might well be a safe environment or threatening environment. So they're quite useful in those respects. Um, moving on back to the Psychorama thing, just as an example, there are now very, very simple LED patterns that have been designed for use as psychonama patterns that reflect the traditional old school light sources. But one of the benefits of these versus one of the earlier um, incarnations of this particular style of equipment is different coloured LED emitters have been um, devised. So it's no longer just let's mix between three different colours. This particular one is mixing between four, and there are some that mix five. So now, if you want to hit a brand color, if you want to actually get to that point where client tells you it has to be a particular color, it's really, really easy to achieve. But the previous technology strained to get there. And Pete, if you've got a white for that, just because LED used to not really do very well with white, whereas these are really come on a tree. I mean, that's something that's really, yeah. really quite amazing for LED. These obviously come in much longer lengths, we don't have to put down little ones. Yeah. One of the great benefits of that now looking at it is it's data chains together and one entire row comes to the first enough button. So suddenly your large amount of distribution naturally sitting behind the stage are no longer required. Um, moving on to from, from Cyclorama, um, one of the other things that we use a lot in, in, in any uh, event situation is the traditional projector like a profile like because we need to spotlight things we might need to efficiently deliver a, a tight beam or a go-go or a logo or something of that nature and that's what we've been using for years and they're tried and tested and they're absolutely perfect for a lot of applications 
but now we can add in the fact that we've got an LED alternative as part of our toolkit. You know, and as, a, as an alternative, this now offers a bright source and opportunity to do full colour mixing. So the boat one is LED. So the boat one is LED, LED and the other one is the traditional. And the goodest things are, um, and we have picked a particular good one, but I, I don't think, I think you'd agree, that you never get a clarity of that image no. from a standard tons of source form, which, whilst this doesn't take away from large projections, if you needed to fill a wall with a picture for a reason, for a relatively cheap, cost effective way, you can now put a glass over in a source form and fill your wall like that, as opposed to starting to think about projection and all that goes along with it. And obviously, I appreciate it, it doesn't work with a picture, but if you just mix, just mix a couple of colours behind it. So if you had a corporate, a corporate logo that was a, a number three or something, we can then, rather than spending a, a fortune on getting the exact colour match when you make the go, yeah. you make the go-go in white, which is a great deal cheaper for you. And then we can mix the correct colour that your client wants. What we often find is if you say to your client, there we go, you have, here's your three phases, four phases, you feel it, we're happy, you know, it's a bit touchy feeling it. One of the other areas where, where, where we put a lot of the, this equipment in now is exhibitions. Systems that have to run on a regular basis for, for long periods of time. Because there's the maintenance of them. It's, it's you know, it there's there's no the there's no there's no there's So it becomes far more responsible in those particular and cost effective from, from the, 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 the later regimes that might otherwise have people in our hands. I think it's a good point for exhibition. There is there is a counter to that, which is something that, that does need to be considered. Is that uh, people are, a lot of venues have been very used to equipment generating heat. So when you take that away, you might at some point need to add additional heat back in to allow the venue. And there was a classic point uh, at the Natural History Museum where where the entire event was lit with LED, and it was markedly different in temperature in the room just because of that. So. You know, we are moving forward and there are lots of advancements in technology. But it is a consideration of plumbing costs and conditioning costs and everything else with um, the overall budget, um, especially if you're doing marquee work and things like that in the summer, by using this equipment, it hugely reduces your generating costs. So although the lighting budget goes up a little bit, the overall budget actually is greatly reduced. You've got any examples of where so like you've done a big thing in the NEC where they charge you 30, 40 grand for power where you've actually made savings? Is it, does it make a significant It makes a significant saving, yes. Yeah. How much stock, like, we can see we've got lots of tools, but in terms of, like, we say, rather than the whole show, the size of the done with LED, is that something? That's very cheap, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cheap. I mean, our, our capital budget is basically the overhead of the state, it's about 80% up to £2 million a year standing still. And I'd say we've spent one and a half million of that two million on LED equipment last year. One of the other very useful things about the, the newer technology LED, it, we talked about the colour range that's, that's available on site paramas, but on something like this, the, the tints and, the, and, the, and the, the, the small changes you can do in colour are very useful for lighting the face. Now it's, it's absolutely acceptable to light that. Face with an LED source uh, because the colour rendering is synthetic. So when you're doing a constant stage and you decide that you go down that sort of route, you can achieve a good wash across the stage in the simplest form. But also you can hit those particular colour temperatures that television companies are made of suddenly require you to do. And that's just the press of a button rather than having to take down any gel or change or respect in any way. So there are lots of opportunities there in that new technology. And yeah, and it's, and it's constantly advancing. The other, the other things to look at are, um, well, well, it's been around for a while, but it's the LED technology in terms of automated wash effects. If we can look at the, the, the Mac 101 first. And pop it up. <coughs> so pure, purely I'm showing this as an example first, just because that, sort of, that light source there is what, that high, yeah, it's automated, moving around, changing colour, and extremely intense as a light source. And that's LED. And that's LED. So, 
if, if we didn't brief you and didn't say, actually, it's really important this event has some sustainability press, could you use as much energy as possible? If we never said that, would you? Would your preferred choice of lighting be LED? Yes. Okay. I think it's the way that everybody defaults. Everyone's thought process goes there. I don't think anybody really thinks I must put a really, really large well, lamp to move in light on it. I think there's LED units of all sorts that will, that will do the job of the big ones. Um, definitely. So, yeah. so the quality from a lighting design From a light design point of view, yeah. And, and a reflection of that is the actual production. But what's currently one of the, one of the current in, are now being lit in LED. Oh, times. Thank you. Yes. First West Ham show uh, to be lit solely with LED. The theatre designers have been very snobby, uh, I think, in an inadvertent way about taking on the technology. They found a hundred reasons why they won't use it. And to have that now in the West End system is great. And that would be very interesting. They do all the maths on how much our cost of energy would use, uh, maintenance costs, and everything else. And, and the quality of light is, is super. So, um, what about large scale architectural? Uh, things to replace city colours and things like that. Strangely yeah. enough, uh, we are yeah. just working on a project that we can't talk about, which all I, I said to the end of the was that we've done an awful lot of research on this particular piece of equipment, and we tested it thoroughly, and the boys came back to me with one answer, and it was fucking bright. <laughs> <laughs> and so, big spaces now, we lit, we lit the NHN facade, and that's all we specifications of price. It's not an LED source, but it's totally unique in the intensity of the beam that's produced out of something again that's the size of so it's very weak, but, um, something like that, a little, a little bit, but, but cutting through smoke, etc. It's a it's a stadium piece of equipment that's suddenly become accessible you to will see all this. the next 24 hours in the private life, you will see that you somewhere. It's on so many television programs, so many rock and roll shows, product launches, you name it. Out there. But I think it's only 150 watt source. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Sorry, I was just going to say that although it's fantastic that we all can see the developments in technology and the tools that are at our fingertips, for you that are only briefing a lighting designer, the primary thing is still the story that we're talking about. I understand that first. Yeah, exactly, it is. It is because. In the end, it's our responsibility as to how we interpret your, yeah. interpret your story yeah. and, and deliver it. And what we need is those indicators that, that tell us, going back to that plinth, if, if I like that plinth and you don't tell me any other information about what's on that plinth, I'm probably just going to like that for illumination. But I could light it with a massive great big source that comes out like that, or I could just light it with a tiny cut. Now, if I light it with that massive source, you might be telling me, there are five plinths, but we've got to be extremely economical with our money. So we've only got enough money for one light to light those five plinths. Or you might be saying to me, actually what we're trying to do is create something that is an interesting experience to walk through. So I'll light every single one of those plinths with a single down light, which is a completely different perspective, but it comes from exactly the same starting point of we're lighting a plinth. So it is really important to have that little bit of nuggets of information, which then we work on and respond to. Because lighting in the end is that extra layer that's on top of everything else. And we need to be completely in harmony with everything else that you put forward. If you're creating a fantastic set, we need to be there to help make that set come to life. Tell that story. I think it challenges this again more of a comic book that, that I personally come across with the lighting side of things on the job. Quite often we're having to pitch Yes, it is, it is difficult once you start getting from, from a creative point of view right at the very beginning. Um, but I think it's important to get people involved at, at the earlier stage. You know, we have a great deal of experience, it has to be said, and although we like to think that everything is ultimately unique and bespoke, there's only so much you can do in the Hooker Ballroom, for instance, or how much you can do in the MEC, or so on and so forth. So if you ever want somebody just to hold your hand and say, I won't come against you yet, but what do you think is this about right for lighting budget? By all means, that's what we're there for. I just, I, I'm saying a comment because I think that personally, the technical side of things will be cost of the job. It's very hard to do. It's, it's easier when you know, right, I need two video screens, you're always going to need two video yes, screens. Yes, of course, yeah. So if you send out a lighting brief, it's very hard. You have one quote that says 10, 20 grand and one that's 12. Yeah. But it's, this is, it's well, down to how we interpret exactly. that in, in, yeah. in what style of equipment we're using and so on. And, but, you know, it's what I think we're trying to get also look at here is that the added value of the newer technologies that, that come in are also giving you far more flexibility in that and helping, helping in some respects for you to push that decision further down the line. From a theatrical point of view, the classic is that you go for your, your production meeting right at the very beginning and you have to put a budget in for everything, which you haven't designed, you don't even know what the set is, you don't even know what's going on, they've probably never written the story yet. But then, at that point, you have allocated yourself a certain budget. So, what you're going to do, and it's not necessarily, uh, you know, it, it is you give yourself an automated lighting mix. So that when you get into the theatre, and the director says, I want it to be there, you do it there. And if they say they want it to move it there, you do it there. And you know you have the flexibility to be able to do that with the tools you have. And that, you know, that's the, the balance that I think some of this new technology is now giving you. So, again, telling you stuff like, actually, this client's quite tricky and isn't going to make up their mind until we get it. So yeah. Stuff that you need to know. It's certainly, certainly what we need to know, uh, you know, and, you know, or we know that this venue is particularly, particularly difficult from a, um, a, a, a cable management point of view. That, well, that might then say, okay, well, we're going to use wireless. We can use that technology because it's, it reduces the amount of time and effort, etc. in terms of it. Are you going to? I was going to say some of these. Yeah, okay, well, let's. Yeah, sorry. Just uh, a quick question on briefing. Yeah. Um, a traditional corporate brief would be something like, well, in the kind of general state, you watch a couple of speaker positions in a video state, mm -hmm. and you know, that's crap, it doesn't tell you anything. What's the best kind of corporate brief you've received and what made it? Going into detail. 
go into detail in a little bit. First of all, telling you what, what the project is about, and telling you the story behind the project, because then I can engage in that. Because I can then decide, okay, I'm not just going to do a wash, I'm going to give you something that enables you to help with that. But the detail, the fact that it's the lectern, but the lectern is something or other, okay, I've got to think about that I can't write it in that way. I have to write it in a different way because it might reflect, it might video, it might something else. Um, or, you know, if, the, if uh, the background, for example, is purely video, which is often what happens now, I know I need to be very, very careful in the position of the equipment to minimise, you know, and, and that is important because I would then have to specify a different style of equipment from the other side. And I suppose when we do pictures, though, we, we have like 50 pages at the front of the picture, the mood boards and visuals and stuff. And I suppose but often, quite often we don't revert back to that after we've run it, do we? But that would be. Yeah. But, that, but that's often what the, exactly for the for creatives to get involved with and engage in. And, and often we don't see that. And I generally then ask for that to see you know, where are we going with the project as a starting point. Through some of these quick things, I'm going to go to the top. Um, uh, and basically, just say if there's something you spot you like, that's, that was all done wireless, by the way. Wireless and battery. Uh, that was our Christmas card a couple of years ago. Um, I'll just take you through some of the stuff we've been doing. If there's any images you like, just say stop and we'll talk about it. Surprisingly, we have lots of images.
you can see, you can use this kind of technology sort of everywhere and in, anywhere. Um, it's made lighting an awful lot more affordable, a lot more flexible, um, and we can tick all those sustainable boxes. And it's actually there's no yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That went in 40 minutes. So we can't so if you just work it with that in steps. In there beautifully on those steps, yeah. <laughs> okay. When they're off, they'll be of course, so it just gives you a completely uh, new surface to play with. So, we've done some talking. What about some questions? So, the LED uh, fusion. It's a rather practical bulb, but um, it's part of our sustainability sustainability world, well, well, we have to do our track code. Um, and as part of that, we have to log how much LED light we're using in the show. So we do be able to give us that information very easily. Yeah, I mean, we, we keep going on about LED, but LED has been a fantastic thing for sustainability. But all of the lights and bits of kit we use, we use them because they're very good and they happen to be sustainable. It's the driver, it's a creative driver that we have the driver to get into to mainstream availability. The byproduct is sustainability. But to give you an idea, they, most of this light is 90% more efficient than its predecessor. You have to make sure you add on it's efficient from an electrical generator, electrical consumption point of view. It's equally efficient from you don't need so many cables, so you don't need so much space in the truck. Mm -hmm. so, you know, mm -hmm. so there are many other add ons. Mm -hmm. so. And there's three. There's three. But these just turn off your own. I think time is always a big for me, so we're doing that much yeah. more and that less time mm -hmm. and for the same budget. But, yes. <laughs> The project to be done is the society person. What I'm currently working on at the it's the uh, natural history of the new light of the gallery. And uh, something because I've, I've seen the project through a number of different art uh, for the last 10 years of development. Um, and uh, that's completely the installation of the earth galleries. Um, it's a completely new experience. Uh, in, in terms of doing something like that, you know, we, we're talking a lot about theatrical lighting, mm. but there's a million different beautiful little designer fittings out there. What access do you have to all that kind of gear? Absolutely. Oh, we, 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 you know, we're not, we don't hold a, a, a large stock of those sorts of things. Um, often because you know, we're just both and we generally quite a bit of working inside. But we do sell an awful lot of equipment, so we, we distribute for all the leading manufacturers. Um, and there's, there's, there's so many new products coming through all the time as well. I saw the other day, which is a wireless. So it's an exhibition light, it's a complete wireless, it's a battery, um, and literally wherever you want, off you go. Um, we're probably going to start distributing those, so there's, there's an awful lot of equipment we sell. A lot of them don't go into the highest levels of pure, they're built for more of the domestic exhibition market. And again,
so you can communicate so that you, you're very comfortable when you're putting that in front of your client that you know it's going to work what's well, everything's on the mm -hmm. uh, So we've got a big resource there, but it's actually bookable as well if you want to do pre-production mm -hmm. and get the set and everything else together before you get site, so you can minimise your site time, um, we can organise that as well. There's, there's very few places in London where you can get that done. So we look very calmly on the hard price of that space if we're doing the lighting site. Richard, should just emphasize whilst we've got we've got the in-house resource to design to a very, very high level, we, it's not something we shout about because we're we're kind of very concerned, we like to keep people's freelance careers going. So we're very, so whilst yes, there's Jason, which is sort of, so I know some of you know, equally able to do all of that, we're equally very, very happy to work alongside your choice of lighting design. Because, you know, they've got freelance careers and we'd rather they kept those freelance careers. So, you know, we, there's both strings to our If you want a little small project there with, we can do that. Um, but there's people in the house who, who understand lighting design. Likewise, Rob Jones is the Gary Collins of the world, send them to us and we'll provide them with the production electrician there, we'll give them all that support. Any email here today, but with, you know, any, any people like that you work with all the time, we're very happy just to support them downwards and give them everything they need. I think what we're finding is it depends on the size of the job. If the job is, is, is a certain size, quite often the and lighting designer may not accept you to get that one for that. It's kind of quite when it's a Small size and the time pressure is there, then we can't have another project company like yourself. We can do it. We've always been a bit shy about charging it up because we do want to protect our freelance friends, but you know, it is there should you need it. Yes, we, we make our money by hiring our people. So I hope you found that useful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. I've just got my details. Any questions? If you'd like to come to my night to come and play, please do. We, we like playing too. Get the smoke machines out and make the toys out. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.